Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and Patch 5.2.3 has just dropped. This is not the only news that you'll be getting today because it has been confirmed on the Total War Discord that a dev video will also be dropping later today. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled on this channel. But until then, let's talk about the changes coming into Patch 5.3.2 because there's actually quite a few. It's very well structured. So General tweaked the porthole lighting in both campaign and battles to emulate a slight red hue caused by sunlight very basic there, but performance. Fixed a rare crash where a previously resolved dilemma remained in the event feed, causing the game to crash if the related character died later in the campaign. This is something that knocked me out a while back actually, it's uh, very frustrating, but good to see that it's gone. Fixed a free slash crash that occurred when creating more than 254 settlements to the one of the old ones with Nakai. Weird. Oh, so if you just build a massive empire with Nakai. See, I don't play Nakai that often. And fix the crash that occurred when disbanding a unit from a war army. Yeah, that was an odd one, but I guess they have to start sorting that out very quickly as, well, you know, there's a Greenskin DLC coming up. All right, we're going into the campaign now. General Sash gameplay fixed the bug where characters occasionally moved large distances after raising settlements, resulting in them being in different regions than the one that they just raised. Now, after raising, an attacking army will move away one hex beyond the zone of control radius, while a surviving army will move three hexes away from the settlement. Okay, yeah, that's quite interesting. The thing is, we don't know how large as the hexes are, but it should be better. I mean, this is better if like, you're getting an enemy army sacking something, you were so close to actually dealing with them, and then they just run so far away. So I'm happy about this. Fixed an issue where playing a Sinesh and using the Pleasure Hunt pleasurable activity could sometimes apply its effects multiple times. Okay, yeah, a bit broken. The Star Metal Talents upgrade in Ikit Claw's Forbidden Workshop no longer grants Vanguard deployment to Warp Grinder units, as they already have this attribute. Didn't even know they actually granted that. Weird. <laughs> Fixed an issue where effects providing immunity or damage resistance to attrition also affected dissertion, such as, such as in the cases of bankruptcy. Oh, I think that actually explains why I was doing my Wood Elf campaign and I was just not losing that many people despite being bankrupt. All right. And the elect account of Hodgland position no longer provides a movement range bonus twice. Shame. That was a good one. That was a good one. So, ability, skills, and traits. Hero units that can join cafe caravans will now have spells or abilities where appropriate. Nice! Good, 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 good. Uh, fixed an issue where upgrading a Kale Sorcerer, Death to Nurgle. Kale Sorcerer, Death would result in getting the wrong trait. Sweet. And fix an issue where some effects meant for Nurgle characters were incorrectly applied to Sunesh Chaos characters. For auxiliaries, the experimental explosive item gained from Cafe Caravans can now be transferred to other characters. Great. That's a super good item. And finally, Tech Tree fixed an issue where researching Grand Throne Chamber technology would unlock the Dwarf Lord Mikael Ledstrong, who was meant to be obtained through legendary grudges. Okay, it's a thing to get it earlier, but apparently no longer there. Alright, we got some recruitment changes. The effects of different levels of province control no longer impacts recruitment costs for Tomb Kings, as they do not incur recruitment costs. So they're fixing up something that they tried to fix up recently, so that makes sense. Character recruitment from buildings like the Deeps and Gardens of Moor was overriding normal character recruitment. Now the only recruitment option with the highest Lord rank will be displayed. Cool. Missions and victory conditions fix an issue where some missions would double their settlement count when reloading saves. I had that, it's weird. Actually, yeah, very, very weird. Campaign UI and UX fix an issue where harmony effects on buildings would display as a negative value when adding yin. Added help page buttons to the Nurgle Plagues and Tamakon's Chieftain panels. Cool, that's just in case people need it. While you're not using it because you've been playing so much, some newer players might need help buttons, so that's always good. Fixed a bug where players could undo spent skill points for heroes. Weird. Couldn't, couldn't. Okay. See, that's my dyslexia coming into effect. <laughs> uh, fixed the bug where the Spices UI panel displayed landmarks alongside resource buildings at the Fortress of Dawn. Remove text references in the help pages to Chaos Factions automatically declaring war to align with the intended design. Fixed an issue where the help pages would open behind the Bloodlines panel when playing as Vampire Counts. 
I'm assuming that that would freeze the game, actually. I think I've seen someone report that in the forums. Fixed a display issue with armies under control where all the VX instances remained after moving an army in ambush stance. Fixed an issue where the scroll position in the allied recruitment panel would reset when selecting a unit from an outpost as the first unit to be recruited. The scroll now stays in its correct position after selecting unit, improving the recruitment flow. Cool, 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 cool. Clicking on the pin of recruitable unit cards should now correctly pin and unpin the card. Tweak the entry in the effects list of the item gained event, popping up to resolve occasional text bleeding issues into the UI. Fix an issue with the Alpha Lore and Landmark buildings did not display the Landmark icon or tooltip. Resolved an issue where clicking on the pieces of 8 mission scrolls as the Vampire Coast incorrectly navigated to the missions panel. The scrolls now correctly direct players to the pieces of 8 panel, ensuring smoother navigation during treasure hunts. Campaign environment. Fixed an issue on the campaign map where a horse in the tall Sario region, Avalon's start position, was clipping for an altar, improving visual consistency in the area. See, that stuff is important. I never noticed that, but then again, I've not really been playing as Avalon recently. I've even been moving Nakari with mods to different locations, just for different styles of campaign. But then we're going to go into battle and gameplay. Fixed an issue where high off towers and some of the walls behind them would disappear after being destroyed in siege battles, while still functioning as intact barriers interesting towers now leave rubble behind and walls remain visible post destruction dev note we're aware of ongoing related issues with other high elf siege uh, map destruction and c are continuing to investigate oh yeah there's a few towers which um fire into your own walls and do damage right it's just super super strange Fix an issue where the enemy reinforcements displayed in the event message did not match those shown in the objectives panel for the Battle of the Armor of Grimrill Scales. Oh, weird. I guess you get more enemies? Oh no, that's happened before where it just shows reinforcements being like a character and no other units for some reason. And fixed an issue where the altar of spawn settlement was not using the Norska Minor Settlement battle map. Battle AI. Okay, this should be quite interesting. The AI is now less likely to use the general unit for solo harassment or outflanking. Good. It's super weird because that means that sometimes you can just take out the enemy general super quickly, which is, I mean, advantageous for you, but still kind of breaks immersion. The AI controlled lord will no longer withdraw when ambushed if it has a good chance of winning. Sweet. At least that, that fight is there. Fix pathfinding on certain river maps to prevent the AI from attempting to cross through the water. Fix the rare bug where enemy units were routing towards the player's units. Yeah, super weird. It keeps happening. Nice to see that gone because they kept running into my dudes. And I was playing Empire, so like they were being shot. <laughs> uh, now the reinforcements AI will join the fight more quickly if the main army is engaged in melee. So rather than just forming up and waiting there for like two minutes, they'll actually get into combat, which is good. Fix the bug where the AI was attempting to go to the river while the enemy was already on the same side. Fix the bug where the defending AI was constantly reforming in land battles. That is such a frustrating thing. Battles should feel a lot better if this has been fixed and it actually works. Like, I'll be really happy about that. I wish I could play today, but it is a national holiday here, so after I record this, I'm going out. Now the AI will attempt to synchronize the river assault groups based on the player's positioning when passing through different crossings. There's a lot of river issues, isn't there? And then there's a dev note here, which is always really nice to see. Previously, if the player was defending at only one location, the AI would lose units while those crossing at another location did not engage in combat. Now, the first group will wait until the second group crosses the river, allowing them to attack together. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea for me, honestly. That sounds like a very good fix. Uh, unit generals and animations. Fix the bug where the Razor Goal would move too far from the chariot during one of its attack animations. Cool. Fix the bug where the Demon Prince of Corn was missing one of the weapons during the fly attack animations. So, this might not sound very interesting, but keep in mind that uh, the animations are what fires the damage. When the animations start failing, the damage becomes less, or sometimes not altogether. Uh, so the Ghost Dwarf is no longer allowed to appear in ranked armies. Cool. Resolved an issue where parts of the Reichsguard and Empire Knight's helmets would disappear. Not a big thing, but again, very important for, like, immersion. Uh, sometimes the heads would disappear. Resolved an issue with the High Elf Princess's torso and armor textures distorting. Yeah. Fixed the missing arm and back cape for the Queen Kalida. Uh, fixed the visual problems with the leg armor of the Steed of Sunesh. 
and fixed a bug of the Lemian Vampire Lord's head texture does not appear correctly. Cool, cool, cool. Environment. Address several visual issues including missing objects, texture problems, floating objects on the Badlands Wasteland map, Ice Witch Mountains, Kizlev Mountains map, misplaced assets in the Haunted Forest, Dragon River, Black Ark, and pixelated fallen trees on the Baron's Bluff map, among others. This is good. They're fixing up a lot of maps. That's really good. Musa and objects out of playable area on the Perch Pass. Southlands Mountains map to align with the intended design. Fixed an issue where an Ogre Camp battle map would occasionally load incorrectly in the Badlands Marsh in uh, area of the campaign map. Fix a lighting issue in the Battle of the Great Hall of Greasers. Fix an issue where ground units could be deployed mid-air. Oh my god, they finally fixed that! <laughs> the dwarf map, yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe they finally fixed that. I've been reporting that since, like, I think Shadows of Change. It's good to see that sorted. Yeah, if you didn't know, there's some dwarf maps where you could place units and they'd be just high in the sky firing down. That's so good. Finally, uh, fixed camera collision issues with certain assets, including the multiplayer maps and Battle X UI. Uh, the unit card for the big one or in Forex Quest Battle is now correct. And fixed an issue from unit info element would not appear during replays. Okay, so replays are going to be a little bit better off. I'm really happy. Honestly, just the, the, the dwarf map has just... Oh, that's made my day. Seriously, I wish I could sit down and play today. I really do. There's some multiplayer fixes that you can see on screen right now. Remember that this is now going live. So if you can't see it just yet, give it some time. It usually takes about 30 minutes. I'm pretty happy the hotfixes are becoming huge lately, which is very, very good. It means that actual fixes are coming into effect and it's not taking away from development time from DLCs and so on, which, you know, we'll be able to talk about a little bit later today. So that's quite exciting. I am pretty happy about this. You can find the patch notes linked in the description below. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. I do apologize if I'm a bit slow replying today. It is a big national holiday down here, so I'm going in and out where needed. Uh, thankfully, the other stuff is recorded, so, you know, that's fine. Uh, it's just like, yeah, it's a busy day. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. I'll see you all again, well, later today.